Sech Ezbo Vakamad of Samachay discusses the halachos of returning a stolen object with the extra that you need to pay sometimes under certain circumstances. And the question which will be discussed is when you return it, what happens if the value changed from the time you stole it to the time that you're being brought to court? Do you have to pay the original value? Do you have to pay the later value? The Gemara is going to bring a halacha of Rav on the subject. Then we're going to narrow down what specific case Rav was talking about, which variables he was speaking. And then we'll bring proofs for and against Rav Salacha. So let's review. When a person steals an object, he sometimes has to pay, he has to return the value of the object. He has to pay kefel, he has to pay twice the value, has to pay in a, a complete extra time. If it was a sheep or a cow and he slaughtered it or sold it, he has to pay or four or five times the value. And if there's a false swearing involved, he also has to pay an extra fifth of the original. So Rav says that the Allah is as follows. The actual... Karen, that is the returning, the initial returning of the object itself, that you pay at the value that it was at the time that you stole it. We're going to narrow down what the case is, but he says you don't pay the later value, you pay the initial, the original value at the time that you stole it. The extras, the kefel, the dalad vehe, that you pay at the time that you go to court. Now, what's with the extra chaymesh? Rav doesn't talk about that, but that always goes together with the initial value. So the extra fifth would be evaluated also with the time that you stole it. So the initial and the fifth is the time you stole it, says Rav. The extras, the kefel, the four and the five, is, is at the time you go to court. Okay, now that the Gemara wants to narrow down what case was Rav referring to, and the variables will be, are we talking about where it went up in value, or are we talking about where it went down in value? Are we talking about where he, that is the thief, improved or destroyed, made value go up or down? Or are we talking about where just the market went up or down? So the Gemara begins with a statement of Rav Shesha. So Rav Shesha says, it seems to me that Rav was lying down and falling asleep when he said this, meaning he's asking a kasha on Rav, because there's a Bryce that says the otherwise. There's a Bryce that says, not like what Rav said. The Bryce that says that if the animal was weak and the thief strengthened it, that means he, with his own hands, improved its value. So then he pays uh, kefel and the dalad the two, four, and five times the value, he pays it at the time that it got stolen. He does not have to pay extra because he improved its value. So that's a Kashan Rav who said that the two, four, and five you would pay by the later value. So the more answer is no, that's different because he himself improved its value. What is because he, he would say, just because I improved it means I need to pay back more. What logic is there in that? I'm not returning to something that you had, I'm returning to something that I myself put into it. So, okay. That's not Hakasha, and Rav wouldn't say his halacha in that situation. Now, we have another brysa, and this brysa says if it was fat and he weakened it, that is, he overworked it, and he caused it to become thin and uh, weak. So there, the brysa says, he pays two, four, and five times the value at the time that he stole it. Again, same halacha. And again, not like what Rav said. So Rav says no. Again, because he's responsible for the weakening, just like he's responsible for the entire whatever he did to it afterwards, that he slaughtered it, or that he sold it, all the things that he did. Of course, he shouldn't gain from the weakening that he did. The Gemara's expression is, what's the difference if he killed it partially or he killed it completely? He himself caused the damage. It doesn't gain from the loss in value, and therefore he has to pay two, four, and five of the original value at the time that he stole it in the first place. Okay, so in these two situations where the thief himself causes it to go up or down in value, it's not what I was talking about. Rob would agree. You pay two, four, and five at the time, at the valuation, at the time that he stole it. What then is Rob talking about? He's talking about where the market went up or down. Now, the Gemara says, well, now let's narrow it down. We're we talking about where it went up or we're talking about when it went down specifically. So the Gemara wants to say, maybe we should say that Rav argues on a halach of Rabba. Rabba said that if you stole a barrel of wine and it was and went up, you, the time that you stole it, it was worth one zuz, and at the time that you were brought to court, it was worth four zuz. So now the law is as follows. If you broke it or drank it, that means he physically caused it to be destroyed. He has to pay four zuz. He has to pay the later value. And the reason for that, Rashi explains, is that as long as he's holding it and he didn't do anything to destroy it, it's still in the property, in the ownership of the original owner. The theft actually occurs when he breaks it or drinks it. And therefore, the time that he breaks it or drinks it, it was worth four zoos. That's what he has to pay. Now, 
If, however, he didn't do anything, it just broke on its own or it broke through an accident. So there, the payment, the theft, goes back to the time he originally took it from the property of the guy, and then he would have to pay the original value, the value of one zuz. So now the kasha here is that our situation of Rav, where you pay the dollar of hay, that he slaughtered it, or that he sold it, that's like he broke it with his hands. That's the moment of the theft. And therefore, that should be the moment that we evaluate, right? Not the original. How come Rav says that the Karen, the original value, which is like what we're, what we're referring to here by the theft, how come Rav says that it, that, that goes by the original value? must be arguing on the Salah of Rabba. So he says, no, Rav was not talking about a case where it went up in value. Rav was only talking about a case where it went down in value. So we've come out that Rav is talking about in a situation where the thing went down in value because of market fluctuations, not because of something he did, there, the Karen would be the original value, the original higher value you would pay, and the two, four, and five times the value would be by the lower value, the later value. Okay, the Gemara now begins with Raya's. The first one is uh, Bryce brought by Rabbi Chanina, which is going to prove that the payment of Kefel will change and you would go by the later amount. And this comes from a Bryce that brings a three-way machlekes about a case where somebody... Is, is, is he was a Shaymer Pikadin and he said that it got stolen from him. He swore, and then it turned out that he was the one who actually stole it. And witnesses came and he admitted it. So, if he admitted it before the witnesses came, so he's putter from Kefel, he only has to pay the Karen, he has to return the initial object, and he has to pay an extra fifth and bring a Karman Asham because he swore falsely. And because he was made before the witnesses came, he's putter from the knas, which is the kefal. Now, if the witnesses came first and then he admitted, then it doesn't help him that he admitted. He already has to pay the kefal. So the question here is, what do you do with the kefal plus the chemish? He has to pay an extra fifth because he swore falsely. He has to pay kefal because he stole it. How did those two things combine together? So the Gemara, the Abraisa brings three opinions. Rabbi Yaakov says they cancel out. The Gemara is going to assume that means that they were the same value. And we're going to have to try to figure out how does a fifth the same as a complete second payment. Kefel is paying the full amount, 100% again. Uh, Chomesh, a fifth, is paying 25% again. That way, the amount that you're paying plus the amount of the original value, that together is five times the extra that you're going to pay. So it's actually 25%. So how does 25% equal 100%? That's where our rise is going to be from. But first, let's see the other two opinions. So the first opinion there that we said is Rabbi Yaakov. The next one is the Chachamim. Chachamim hold, there is no Chemish. The Pesach of Chemish says... It's only when it's Ashamay Beroisha, it's only when you need to pay the Roisha, the original amount, which is the Karen, that's where there's Chaimish. In the case where there's Kefel, there's no Chaimish. Meshimim ben Yechai is the third opinion, he agrees to that, but he adds not only is there no Chaimish, there's also no carbon Asham. Only time you bring a carbon uh, Asham, he says, is when you're only paying a Karen. When there's Kefel, there is no Chaimish, uh, and there's no Asham either. Now, the Gemara's question is in Rabbi Yaakov, like we said, how does it come out that the Kefel and the Chaimish are equal? How does 100% equal 25%? Says the Gemara, it has to be that the original, that the value changed. The original value when he stole it was four zos. It went down to one zos. So the Karen is four zos. You have to pay four zos. It went down to um, the Chaimish of that, like you said, is 25%, which is one zuz. So the chemish is equal to one zuz. Then it went down to one zuz. The value dropped all the way down to one. Now he pays kefel. Kefel is the value at the time that they go to court, and therefore it's one zuz. So the chemish and the kefel come out equal, comes out to one zuz. That's the only possible situation we can think of that, and that approves exactly like Rav, who said that the kefel, which includes the, the, the karen, that is, which includes the chemish, is that the original value, and the kefel is at the later value. So the Gemara knows it's not a proof. It could be that it was really worth the same amount all along. Let's say it was worth four zoos in the beginning. It's worth four zoos at the end. So the Chaimish 25% is um, one zoos. And Kefal is four zoos. However, he went ahead and he swore again and again and again. He swore four times. For each time, he has to pay a whole nother Chaimish. He has to pay a whole nother zoos. Therefore, he's paying four Chaimishes. He's paying four zoos, which is equal to the Kefal, which is four zoos. Now, you know that you pay again and again if you swear falsely multiple times because the Torah says v'chamishi sav, chamishi sav, pronounced chamishi sav, which is plural, and therefore there's many different chamishes that are possible for one karen. 
Okay, now the Gemara takes a break from Raya's to Rav. The Gemara wants to analyze the Mechlekes between the Chachamim and Rishim Chai. They had argued about when you're paying a Kefel, do you still have to bring an Ashmanat? They both agreed that you don't pay Chaimish questions, do you bring an Ashmanat? And the Joshua was based on where it said, Bereshay, Ashamay, Bereshay, Achamishi, Sai. So clearly you only pay Chaimish when there's Bereshay. Bereshay means you're paying only the Karen. The question is, is there also Ptor of Asham? So Mark quotes a puzzle that seems to say clearly that Asham is also only when there is Karen. Why? It's a different one, not the same we had before, but it says, Vashida, Maisa, Bereshay, Achamishi, Sai. So it says Bereshay, and then you pay Chaimish. And the next Pazak says, So the Gemara asks, Rabbi Shimon Ben Yichai, understand? It says Bereshay, Chaimish, and Asham. So the the Chaimish and the Asham both should be dependent on having where it's only Karen. If it's more than Karen, you shouldn't have to do either of them. What do the Chachamim do? So the Gemara says, the Chachamim say, because it says S in between Chaimish and Asham, and the S is to divide it. The Asham doesn't go back on Ber Roshay. What do Hashem Anichai? He says, no, it's V'S. V'S links the two together. Chachamim say, well, hold a second. If you want to link them together, don't say S, don't say V'S, don't say anything. Just leave the whole word out. That's how you link it. Obviously, the Pasuk is trying to divide them up. V'S can't override the S if you don't have to write anything, and then it will be just as linked as before. Roshim Anichar responds and says, no, you have to say S, because before the S is talking about money that you pay to the person. After S, it's talking about something you bring to HaKadosh Baruch It's Momen uh, Gavaya. It's in carbon Asham. You can't put the two together. It's a lack of their Eretz to link them together. You have to separate it with an S. But to make it clear that both of them are dependent on the Karen being the only thing you're paying, that's why it says V.S. The Gemara now goes into a slightly different Soge, which will come back around to being a Kasha on Rav Salacha. So here we have a Lacha said by Rabbi Allah that there's a concept called Kinyin Shinoi. When the thief stole an object, if it changed in his possession, now it's different and he owns it. And this is an Afkamina. So the halacha of Rabbi Allah is if somebody stole a lamb and then it grew into a ram, or he stole a calf and it grew into an ox, so it changed in his possession while he was holding it, the Shinoi makes it a different thing than what he stole, and now he owns it. Now, he still stole it, so he still has to pay back, and he still has to pay kefil. However, if he now sells it or shachts it, he doesn't have to pay the of the hay. That's Rabbi Allah's halacha, because it's no longer still an object, it's now his object, and all it is is that he owes. Fine, he owes, but it's now his. And it's not that he sh- sold or shechted something he stole, he sold or shechted something which belongs to him. Now, on that Rabbi Hanina asked the Kasha, we have a Bryce that says otherwise. The Bryce says if somebody stole a lamb and it turned into a, an isle, he stole an eagle and it turned into a shark, he has to pay Kefel and Arba Vachamisha, and he, this, here's where we're going to have a Kasha on Rav, he has to pay it at the value at which it got stolen. All of those are the value at which it got s- stolen. We'll see soon how that fits with Rav, who says that two, four, and five, you pay at the later value. Now, this kasha is, if, according to you, your putter from the dollar of the hay, once it became a shinoi, so why are you here? Do you have to pay it at all? So, Rabbi Allah responded, and he said, what do you mean? According to you, what do you want to say? That he's chayv? So then why should it be at the value as was at the time that it got stolen? It should be at the value that it is now. Why, why do you go back to that? Just like Rabba said, that 2, 4, and 5 gets paid now. So he said, what do you mean? The reason that he that it's a value which he stole it is because he'll say, I didn't steal a ram from you, I didn't steal an ox from you, that's why I don't have to pay you back 2, 4, or 5 times the value of a ram or an ox. So he said, may Hashem save us from your opinion. So he said, uh, no, no, on the contrary, may Hashem save us from your opinion. So the Gemara now says, now Rabbi Zera asked the Kasha, and he he injected here, even if you want to argue that there's no Kenyan Shinoi, there should be a Kenyan Shinoi Shame. That's the names changed from lamb to ox, from lamb to ram, and from calf to ox. There's certainly a Kenyan Bishinoi Shame, and therefore, according to all opinion, it should be kind of because of that. So on that, Rava answered, no, it was always called an ox, it was always called a ram. From the day that it's born, the term ox, the, the full-grown name, the term ram, Ram and ox apply to it, and we will have psukim that will show that. It says, Shor oikesev oyeis ki yivoled. So you see that it's called a shar from the minute that it's born. It says when it will be born. Now, as far as the ram, it says, that um, 
Yaakov says to Lavan, I didn't eat any of the rams of your flock. So do you think he, only the rams he didn't eat, but he ate the lambs? Obviously not. So you see that from the first and day, it's called a ram, and that's why the term ram is applying to all the sheep. And therefore there is no shini hashem. Okay, says the Gemara, we still have to address the cash on Rabbi Lo. The Bryce has still said that you have to pay Dal Vehe, and he said you don't. So the Gemara answers, Rav Shesha says, it's a Machoikas Tanoim. And Rabbi Lo was going according to one Etana, and this is going according to the other Etana. Machoikas Tanoim is, does Shinoi, the change in the thing, does that change the status as being a different object with new halachos, or does it have the same halachos? What are they discussing? So the Gemara says it's Beis Hillel and Bishamai. They're discussing a situation where a Zaina received payment for her services, and that's what's called Esnan Zaina, and you're not allowed to use it as a carbon. It's possible to go on the Mizbeach because it's Mias. The question is, what if it changed? So let's say she received wheat and she turned it into flour, or she received olives and she turned it into oil, or she got grapes and she turned it into wine. Those things could be technically fitting to go on the Mizbeach. Does it still have the Allah of Esnan Zaina and it can't go on the Mizbeach? Or do we say no, it would change, and therefore it could. So the Machlech is Basil Beishamai. We have a Brisa that brings the two opinions, whether it's Mutter or without a name. And Rav Yasef quotes Gurion of Aspurok, who says Beishamai or the Eisrin, Basil the Matirin. And therefore, uh, Rabbi Ila would hold like Base Hill, that it's changed, and therefore it's a new thing, and there's no Dalad Vehe, he now owns it. And Beis Shammai would say, you know, it's in the original state that it was, and that's this price out that says it's still considered to be the same, and you still have to pay the Dalad Vehe. Now the Gemara goes to the Machogis Bill of Beis Shammai here for a bit, so the Gemara says, what is Beis Shammai's reasoning? Because the Torah says in the Pasuk of Eslan, it says, Gam, the Pasuk is, Lesav Yesan Zaino, Mecher Kel Beis Hashem, Lekecha Lechol Neder, What's the gam? The gam is to include changed versions of these objects. So Basil says, No, we have a judge of the opposite. It lists them specifically to say that it's only them and not changed versions. Um, changed versions do not have the halacha and they are mutter to go on the mezbeach. So Mara says, What is Bishamah going to do with that? Bishamah says, No, it's them and not their children, things which are made from them. Basil says, No, you can learn both things out of them. You have two things them and not their children, them and not changed versions of them. Now, what is uh, Beis Hillel going to do with the Gam? So the Gemara says, Gam is a kasha on a Beis Hillel. Okay, that's the Machlekes. The Gemara now addresses how this fits into Rav. We saw Rav Salacha, where you have to pay two, four, and five times the value is always at the later time. Here it says at the earlier time. So Rav answers, Rav says, it depends what you're paying. If you're returning the actual objects themselves, then you go by the original value. If you're just paying money, then it goes by the later value. That means if you're returning two, four, or five sheep, two, four, or five oxen, then the market value changed fine. You go with the original. If, however, you're paying money, then you have to go by the later valuation. This Bryce is talking about where you're returning the original, where you're returning actual animals. And uh, Rob was talking about where you're paying money.